Hi guys and welcome to another kit review. Okay, so today we're having a look at a kit from Tamiya and it is in 135th scale. It is the German 8 ton semi-track 20mm flak Vierling SDKFZ71. Okay, so this kit number is 35050. Okay, came out around, well it says 2020. I find that hard to believe. From what I've been told, it says 2020, but this kit has been available for quite a few years now. In fact, I remember building this kit in the late 1970s, although I'm not sure if it had the Tamiya trademark or whether it was under another name. But I did build this cat kit in the late 1970s. So it will be interesting to see if anything's changed or if it is still the old kit. So as you can tell, it is standard um, half track, or what Tamiya says is a semi track, okay, carrying a four barreled two centimeter flat gun on the back with the crew in winter uniform. So it does say five realistic figures included winter uniform, movable gun barrels and gun base. Well, yes, because that's their standard four barrel two centimeter flak that they've had forever. And it does have accessories in it. And if I remember rightly, it did have a plastic uh, grill work for the sides. Okay, so that's the box top. I actually haven't had a look in this one. I picked this up about a year ago. Um, on an auction site, they normally retail for around about $36 to $40 Australian. I think I got this one for about $22, something like that. So, you know, I built it way back when. What was that? 50 odd years ago. So I thought I'd just pick myself up another one and see if I could build it again. Okay, so that's the box top. Standard Tamiya art. On the sides, repeat. All Japanese. So I'm not sure what that says. I am probably say it would be um, history of the vehicle. As you can tell, it is built on the standard half track artillery tractor, standard SDK of Z7. Really, they use this chassis for almost everything you could think of. And on the other side, classic Tamiya style, Panther III, Panther, Matilda, KV-1 and M M10 tank destroyer. Okay, Tamiya's address. So, from the box, and this looks like, and I don't think they've changed the artwork on this box because this is exactly what the box looked like back in the 70s. So, I'd say it's pretty much the same kit. All right, so let's get rid of the box top and have a look inside. And yes, indeed. So, this is classic Tamiya, old school, okay? So this is an old kit from the 70s. Um, I read somewhere that it was released in the 2020s. No, it wasn't. I think that's uh, totally wrong. All right. Old Tamiya kits came with full Japanese instructions and full English instructions. And this is the Japanese instructions. All right, everything's in Japanese. Everything is in English on this one. And in a second, we will have a look at the instructions and see if we can find any copyrights. All right, so let's have a look what we've got in the box. First, first bag out is the top of the chassis, chassis um, vehicle sides. This is the mesh for the sides of the vehicle you can see there and the crew in their winter uniform okay next bag out is the steering wheel bonnet front cabin suspension units okay chassis parts etc okay and seats next bag out is the actual flat gun okay so this is definitely 
minus the trailer this is Tamiya's four barrel two centimeter flak okay easy made millions of those vinyl tracks really good quality vinyl tracks chassis okay one piece chassis bottom of the engine gearbox and natural enough the wheels etc drive pockets for the half track section plus decals and axles and two tires All right and that's what's in the box okay in the box of course as usual is just important information on the bottom all right so let's get rid of the box and in a second we'll have a look at the instructions and the decals guys okay so let's have a look at the instructions okay so what you see here is classic tamiya 1970s instructions gives you the full history of the vehicle its development where it was developed from and how it was used all right so modern um, instruction manuals and model kits do not give you this so take a couple of minutes and read this up it's always interesting to find out about the model and the vehicle the ship or the boat or the um, aircraft that you're building and its history okay it's all knowledge and some people might think it's just hey why do I need to know that but it's all interesting stuff guys knowledge is power okay so that's the front full history as I said and another classic sign okay this is classic Tamiya from the 70s they didn't have their own paints at the time so they just told you what color to paint all right there's no Tamiya reference numbers there's no other reference color numbers on this instructions it just tells you paint this German gray paint this German gray paint this matte black okay so use your internet references because it is an old color chart but pretty much this vehicle was overall Panzer gray and if you're making a winterized one then you just uh, use your whitewash to give it the winter coating okay so building the quad gun first fairly simple straightforward Tamiya kit you'll never have a problem with it then it continues on building the gun putting the barrels to the actual mount putting a shield on and then we go on to the chassis now chassis and another classic Tamiya this is a metal axle between the drive sprockets okay poly caps okay are inside the drive sprockets metal axle which means at some stage this kit was um, motorized or possibly could be motorized or at the very least the tracks would go around all right so carry on with the chassis you've got suspension for the half rack section drive shafts etc okay second metal shaft for the back wheels okay and then just fittings for the tail like hooks etc going on the back this is your steering and no this vehicle doesn't steer but it does say do not cement so if you're really careful you could get this to steer all right if I remember rightly it was a bit difficult way back in the 70s so I think mine was fixed but it does say do not cement so I'm gonna give it a go you know if you can turn the front wheels and I don't see why all uh, manufacturers don't at least try to do something like this so you can turn the wheels give the model a bit of a character anyway let's have a look what's next what's next is just putting your road wheels on okay and again right four road wheels tells you what to paint them they go on easy simple straightforward front wheels and, and the steering frame all right they're attached to the front easy done and then you just get to the cabin and again it just tells you matte black here okay matte brown there so use your, use your internet color references see if that's the right color or close to it um, and then away you go 
fairly simple put together. We'll have a look at the sprues shortly. Memory serves me right, there's no texture on the seats, but, um, and again, it does say, um, I know this is an old kit. Like I said, I remember building this back in the 70s, so, yeah, I probably bought it new, so 75, 76. Anyway, so that's the cab. Right, then you've got to your bonnet. There is no engine in this, so you won't be leaving the uh, bonnet open. There's nothing to see inside. Here we have putting on, that says construction of gates. It shows you how to trim the netting to fit on the sides of the vehicle. Tools go on. All right canvas cover for the cab and that is basically the body done this is the construction of your figures so you get five figures in this kit all dressed in winter clothing just finish off by putting the headlights on the front of the vehicle and then literally attaching the top to the bottom and she's done simple as that and then the gun goes on it just clicks into place and swivels right there and that's finished this would be an easy weekend kit um then you just paint the whole thing all over paint to gray paint the seats and other fittings and things like this and then add your whitewash and she's done a couple of weekends and this kit would be over and finished with all right and then on the back here's your coloring all right, camouflage pattern for winter and this is just your overall color shows you where to put your decals and being an old tamiya kit and i'm saying this is an old tamiya kit you get your tactical marks you get your division marks including ss divisions and a lot of modern kits don't include ss divisions it's not politically correct all right you also get your um helmet, helmet decals as well for the crew all right so even though they're wearing whitewash so you won't use them but you can use them somewhere else and that's it it tells you how to paint the figures gives you an example of the officer and the others just follow on all right so that's the instructions pretty straightforward let's have a look at the decals okay and yes indeed there's the decals i'll give you a close-up of that anyway so even though these, this is a rebox of an old kit, I don't know if you can see it, but it says here, right there, copyright 1975, okay? Yes. So as you can tell, it does have your tactical marks, your divisional marks, your helmet decals, including SS decals, okay? SS number plates, all right, and SS tactical um, divisional marks. So that's things you don't normally see on kits nowadays, like I said, because it's not politically correct to show history the way it was. Anyway, that's the decals. In a second, we'll, we'll have a look at the actual sprues. Okay, so let's have a look at the sprues. And first off, let's have a look at the, the smaller parts. So you have two vinyl tyres, tread is, it's okay, not great, all right, um, and it will need a bit of clean up because it does have some, has been moulded from the outside so it will need clean ups. That's your tyres, vinyl tracks, and they're very new, all right, so this is definitely a new molding of an old kit and they're very flexible so they're pretty good I like the vinyls they're a lot softer than they used to be right so there's your tracks what you also get is and I'm not taking this out of the bag that is the windscreen it is just a clear piece of plastic it's not hard plastic, it's soft. 
I can't remember what they call it now. It's literally not injection molded plastic, okay? Vacuum formed, if you want to call it that. It is clear. It's um, only one piece, so that's why you get this simple piece of plastic. Okay, and what else you get is this is the mesh. Alright, so I can tell you for a fact that this is a much, uh, much better quality mesh than Focus, Focus Beastie, than I was, had in my 1975 kit. Right, I can remember that to being very coarse, and this is very fine, so that's actually not bad quality at all. And the other odd bits that you get are just two metal axles and a nut and screw which I think was how you attach the top of the body to the chassis in the old days. Right, so that's your bits and pieces. Bits and pieces. Let's have a look at the main parts. Right, first up, chassis. Nothing spectacular. Engine, gearbox. There is bolt detail. There isn't. This is a 1975 kit, so there isn't yeehaw fantastic detail. There's no detail on the chassis sides as far as bolts are concerned, etc. Fairly basic and straightforward. Okay, that's your main chassis. Next. Next, we have top of the vehicle, tread pattern, seats, sides of the front cab, canvas top, and these are your fold down sides on which the uh, mesh goes. All right, fairly straightforward. Detail wise, yes, good tread pattern on here. As far as the rest of it's concerned, bolt patterns, etc., non existent. Front windscreen with inbuilt windscreen wipers. Okay, a little bit of bolt detail on the sides. Don't know if you can see that, but nothing outstanding. But let's have a look, see. Can we see? There you go. It says it right there. Tamiya 1975 okay that's when this kit was made and the mold has not been changed since since all right so next drill out is more main parts all right, so this is the front of the vehicle, the driver's position, battery, top of the bonnet, sides, front steering, suspension, exhaust pipes, seats, etc. Steering wheel. So let's have a look. Again, not a huge amount of detail. It would be nice if they were open, but a bit of wash, probably do that. Same for the cabin. Not a great deal of detail. The seats have no texture at all. They're smooth. So, depending on what you want to do with that, even just painting it up and painting a bit of texture on it wouldn't be a bad idea. Exhaust pipes, fairly simple, straightforward, basic detail only. 1975 kit with not a huge amount of nuts, bolts, etc. Fancy bits on it. Okay, but it's obviously Reebok, obviously same mold, but it's still clean. There's no major flash on any of these parts whatsoever. That's what I like. About That's what I like about Tamiya. 
is the simple fact of the matter is that even though they have used an old mold like this it's clean so they always keep their their molds etc clean okay so next up we've got as you can see these are your wheels really nice detail not much in a way of bolt detail etc even on the dry sprocket but if this is a winter vehicle you could muddy it up and you wouldn't even notice that it didn't have bolt detail on the road wheels dry sprocket idler wheel etc has got some but it's not over the top like some are okay so that's your wheels and what goes with the wheels poly caps okay so these are the poly caps for the wheels this thing is designed to move right it is designed to have the tracks going round So that's why I say this is um, definitely an old 1975 kit. And I love it just for that because it's simple basic kit put together on a weekend. Okay, so next we will have a look at, and you've probably all seen this together. All right, this is your flat gun. I think most of us have probably made this flat gun at some time in our history. So detail on the flat gun is not too bad right nice bolt detail on the shield on the sides on the framework okay gun detail is really nice seats etc so the gun itself is pretty reasonable the copyright oh that came out of focus didn't it again the copyright stop it 1975 that shows you how old the gun is. Old the gun is. Okay. And how old the vehicle is. So, this is the next part of the gun. The base, sides, ammunition. So the detail on the ammunition itself, the ribbing really nice there is a little bit of bolt detail but not a lot so again an old kit with basic detail okay so that's the guns the guns two sprues and the only other sprue to have a look at is the crew so as you can tell sorry they're the wrong way around as you can tell the crew molded in white plastic all right this is because they're wearing winter uniforms and if you wanted to cheat you just paint the faces and the accessories and belts and leave the rest of it white but that's the cheating way and it really wouldn't give you a very good model because they're too shiny as they are so you do get so even though this is a gun crew you do get accessories as in their spades rifles gas mask containers bayonets water bottles all of these things you could leave off because a gun crew wouldn't carry them they'd be all on the vehicle so you could use these to dress up the vehicle so let's have a look at the faces all right so Faces, 1975 kit. Okay, it's a bit hard because they're, they're white, but the detail is okay. It's passable. It's not, what, Gen 2 Dragon or something like this. They're not uh, resin faces, but a you know, bit of weathering, a bit of shading. They'll come up okay. All right, especially in the winter uniforms. If you wanted this to be a spring summer vehicle, you would have to find crew from 
another kit somewhere. Okay, you do get accessories. As I said, spare ammunition. You know, water bottles, etc. There's your commander figure. The only problem I see is there's fairly... Yeah, there is a fair bit of flash along the mould lines of these figures, so that's going to need a fair bit of clean-up. Okay, and that, I think... And that, I think, brings us to the end of this kit review. So there you have it. 1975 issue. Um, Tamiya. German 8-ton semi-track. 20mm flak dealing. SDK of Z71. Alright, so... This is obviously a reissue I'm not going to say it's a rebox because it's the same box from 1975 it's the same sprues um, even the decals are copyrighted 1975 so literally it is a reissue rather than a rebox but being the old mold it's clean minimum flash apart from a bit of flash on the figures so Yep, I'm impressed with that. Okay, this kit is 75. It is, God, 45 years old and it's still looking strong and still available. Okay, like I said, 36 to $40 Australian. Okay, so um, yeah, it's not a bad kit. There's a few out there that are very similar. Dragon, etc. have things like this. Um, but if you want something cheap and reasonable for a Diorama that you can dress up, muddy up. This is the one to go for, I reckon. Good basic kit. Good kit for uh, any skill level. Literally any skill level. Alright guys, like I said, this brings us to the end of this one. I hope you got something from it. I know I did. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm kind of happy that I realised that it, it was my original kit that I made back in the history okay so as usual until next time take it easy and i'll see you later